All right, so we'll go ahead and see how this thing steers. It steers pretty tough. Um, when you're not moving, you'll probably expect that. Control arm bushings for a little bit and decided to burn them. Yeah, this worked like a charm. Got all the all the rubber out of there. I got the bushings most of the way pressed in. All right, victory. I dropped the steering column and I was able to get the old steering U joint out. A little tougher than I thought it'd be, but I didn't know what I was doing either. So the first is always the worst. All right, we got another donor shaft uh, from a Crown Victoria this time. This one's already the, the double D style. So this hopefully will work. If not, it ain't gonna, it ain't gonna be too bad. All right, y'all, so we have been getting lucky uh, so far. We'll see how it keeps going, but Crown Vic shaft, I've been cutting it. Um, I was hoping that there'd be a D shaft underneath here. And it looks like, Here's a D shaft and it goes in pretty far. So I'm gonna put it in the vise and see if I can knock this through, knock this sheath off, and we'll see how it goes. All right, here's a big reveal. Let's see here if I can blink. Let's see here. Oh, well it, huh. That might still work. I don't know. More to come. So far, this is looking pretty good. Uh, it goes on there real nice. Um, you got the set screws, and then I'll weld it once uh, I get everything dialed in. According my, according to my calculations, I'm probably going to need to cut it about right here, and then that'll move the U joint to where the splines would be. You know, it'd be the same overall length. Uh, I'm not going to get overzealous cutting yet. I don't want to cut. I don't want to cut too much. Uh, so once I get the rack in the car, that's whenever I'll start to get the measurements all dialed in. If you've seen one of David's videos, he put a manual rack and pinion in his car, and what he did was he reused his steering shaft, and he used a double D U joint just like this one, and he just milled it down. He just used a a cutoff wheel, and then I don't know if he used a flap disc or what, but he. He got it, you know, m machined <laughs> down uh, to accept uh, this U-joint. My track record with the grinder isn't wonderful, uh, and this was $16 off of a Crown Victoria, so that's I'm pretty pretty happy with that. Um, I'll keep you in the loop as we go and uh, and everything. Okay, this hasn't happened very quickly, but the old rack and pinions out. And we got the new one just about ready to go in. Press the bushings in. And I have a mess, a mess over here. Um, got the old control arm out and the new one is in hanging by a thread. Now go get it bolted. 
All right, so this is a little bit embarrassing, but if you don't know, this would be a helpful hint. You can see that this one is complete, completely bottomed out. And this one I've been hammering on and pushing in and all that. So I called my paw up and he said, did you use any kind of lubricant? And I did not. So I had to hammer this one out. And then I just put a little bit of dielectric grease. Well, a little bit. I didn't glob it on, but I wasn't super sparing either. And I was able to just push it in with my hand. So that might save you some heartache. All right, so I hammered the problem child out and you can see, you can kind of see how much grease we have. And I was hammering, uh, trying to get this thing in with this, that sledgehammer and watch how easy it goes in with the right, with the right uh, consumables. I don't know what I'm trying to say. When you actually use lubricant there. See, bottomed out entirely. So that's pretty awesome when you do it the right way. Another thing about those bushings, when Richard texted, okay. One thing about those bushings is once you push them through, they'll poke out maybe about a quarter inch or more out of the other side. It looked odd to me, but once you compress them, you know, with the nut and bolt, the washer, they'll, um, they'll compress and it'll look right. So if you bought the move bushings like I did, don't worry. I got the new control arm just about ready to be installed. I had to fight a little bit to get the old one out and you can see that the uh, ball joint just popped out of it. I don't want to bore you with the details but I crashed this car a couple years ago. I thought, away, I, thought I got away scot-free minus that rocker panel um, but I guess it crimped this bore right here because I changed the ball joint about a year later to put that one in. And I had to beat and beat and beat and finally dropped it through. And I think what happened is it had crimped it. And whenever I knocked it out, it blowed out this bore. Because when I went to press that one in, it just went in and then just fell right back out. So in an act of desperation, I put a gross weld on it. And you can see how that weld held. Um, and then the other control arm looks really bad too. I'll just inject a picture of it right now. So you can see that uh, this was long overdue. Okay, is this the right way to do it? Probably not. Is this the way I'm going to do it? Hopefully so. It's not the right way to do it, but we did it. All right, y'all, definitely take this with a grain of salt. You don't, I mean, this is desperate times, desperate measures kind of stuff. But what you can do is take two ratchet straps and banana the coil spring. And then you put the upper part in the perch and the lower part you can get into its little home. Then you put your jack beneath it. I mean, I'm just, I mean, this thing's just barely hanging on. So again, you know, grain of salt. I'll yak it up, put the spindle on, castellated nut, and then connect it to the strut. And then down set hut. I don't know, and then you're done. All right, y'all, this is just another G whiz thing. We got a stock steering shaft with a rag joint versus the one I um, fabbed. Uh, this one, the one I fabbed, looks like it might be a 16th or an eighth of an inch longer uh, than this. Again, that's just G whiz stuff. I'm gonna slam it in and see, and oh my goodness, I hope it, <laughs> hopefully it fits perfectly because I can't easily redo this, but we'll see how it goes. The garage is a total mess, but we're pretty much done. Let me crawl up under the vehicle. Ooh. Um, there's the old Rick and Pinion. And I got lucky, mostly luck, very little skill. Oh man, I didn't turn the flash on. All right, here is the old fabricated steering shift. And let's see if I can move this U-joint just right. You can see that I cut the, wait, move this way. Yeah, I think that'll work. I just got lucky and I cut the length of the steering shaft just enough to where the rack and pinion um, spline shaft just hits about flush with the U-joint. So I couldn't have done it any better if I tried. 
it is pretty dang close to that header. Hopefully, we got no rubbing, Harry. Um, um, that's about it. It's been a week since the beginning of the video, wherever I was driving it in the rain. It's been about a month since I've had it back together. No real complaints. It does take more steering effort than I had anticipated. I grew up driving power steering cars. Uh, so you've got, you really got to want it. You got to tell it. You can't just ask it. It's, you know, you have to put that extra little ump into it to make it steer. I am happy with it just because the extra uh, under the hood accessibility, it's easier to work on uh, the car just, just a little bit uh, or just that much easier. Can't speak. And what else have I for you? Nothing except this. If you go on Summit Racing, that is a $300 rack. If you go on eBay and or CarID.com, it's $200. Now this is June 5th, 2021. It might change in a year, but it's considerably cheaper from CarID. They did send me, the, the first one they sent me, the little pinion nut for the preload, it was off. Someone had taken it off, tampered with it, forgot to install it, I don't know what. They sent me another one, no charge. They shipped the other one back, no charge. So they're good stuff. I think that's everything. I'll see you next time.